This is not okay in the least bit. And I know there's gonna be somebody that says, oh, you're looking for controversy where it doesn't exist. No, this is an 1830s slave cabin that is up on Airbnb as a, as a bed and breakfast. How do I know that this is slave quarters other than just using my eyes and looking at it? Well, they say it in the listing. This particular structure, the Panther Burn Cabin, is an 1830s slave cabin from the Panther Burn Plantation. How is this okay in somebody's mind to, to rent this out, a place where human beings were kept as slaves? Rent this out as a bed and breakfast. Here it is, that's it right there, the slave quarters next to the big house. It's in uh, Greenville, Mississippi. That's, that's the host, Brad, the super host. <laughs> the super host, um, uh, that's TikToker lawyer Winton exposing this particular Airbnb bed and breakfast listing in its luxurious slave quarters cabin in Mississippi at the Belmont Plantation in Mississippi uh, to be more specific. Um, again, what he's pointing out is the degree to which folks in this country don't understand or choose not to understand the uh, severity of things that went on in our slave trade. Maybe it's the reason why they want to teach it in schools because people might go, "Oh my God, we did that." Yeah, it's pretty obvious. And then after afterwards, we start selling off Airbnb rooms for it. You know what? He continued on taking down this ridiculous posting. Let's let him continue. What really kills me is reviews. Memorable, highly recommend watching the sunset. We stayed in the sharecropper cabin and ate in the main house. Enjoyed everything about our stay: the cottage, the history, the tour, the breakfast, and all was great. We stayed in the cabin and it was historic but elegant. A slave cabin is elegant. What a delightful place to step into history, southern hospitality and stay a night or two. Cool spot, way better than a hotel. Maybe you're thinking, okay, maybe this will give people insight on how enslaved people had to live, their living conditions. No, not at all. Clawfoot tub, running water, tile. You know, nice lighting fixtures, water, towels, dresser. There's a decent chance that people that stay there would be like, oh, it wasn't so bad. I, I, it sounds crazy, but I guarantee you. Uh, more details really fast, Jackson. It appears that this Airbnb has been removed though, this particular listing, and it no longer appears on the plantation's website. We'll see how long before it comes back up. Airbnb and the Belmont Plantation did not immediately respond to the insider's request for, the, for comment on this. But Mike, Mike reported that there are several other properties that also offer up other former slaves quarters as luxury accommodations. A search of Airbnb also shows several properties in New Orleans for rent that started uh, that started as housing for the enslaved. So Jackson, um, you know, we gotta stop teaching the CRT in schools or else people might start feeling bad about the history of the country and guilty themselves. Instead, what we should do is just uh, rent out slave quarters and say how nice and beautiful and wonderful our history was and how we treated these humans. When actually we raped, murdered, separated, maimed, dismembered, uh, and forced them to work their entire lives. Nice history. Well, I, I can't lie, I was laughing at this story the whole time I read it this morning because it's like this is the whitest thing ever. Like, <laughs> just oh, let's do whatever we want. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like those comments, man. Yeah, but but it's it's just always funny again because a lot of the time, you know, it it's just a reflection, you know, because I'm half white. So I but I didn't grow up in a white world, so I, I see this a lot. And the, you know, sometimes I'm around my mother's side of the family. They're just like, they don't really know. You feel me? Like, because they, because they're not around it. Like, especially if they're from like more rural areas and they're like, like in the city or something like that. So you see this a lot. But also, I mean, it, just in general, I think that you know, uh, former slave houses, plant anything on a plantation is better used for like museum purposes, so you can showcase, okay. you know, how history actually was and a real reflection of it. Um, so I think this is just kind of irresponsible as a whole, but you know, just why it was another point that a lawyer made. He was like, maybe, you know, these shouldn't be burned down because people are like, hey, maybe someone should torch those things. And he's like, these should stay up so people understand what the reality was. If we burned things like this, we're burning the fact that we've seen this and that it's happened this many times. So it's, it's honestly, um, <laughs> I, I went to a plantation in South Carolina um, when I was actually in town for another event. And it was just after the, um, I think it was first AME church when Dylan Roof went in there and shot up all those folks and uh, black folks. And then, you know, went to Burger King with the cops and when he went to jail. So I went to a plantation during that visit when I was there for something else. And I visited the site and everything like that. And I can't remember the name of the plantation, but the excitement 
and uh, entertaining value of the host, or at least the, there was a tour guide for the whole plantation as we were on this tour. And he's like, and then this is where, uh, if you look on the wall, there's a bill of sale for a young Negro girl. And I was like, are we supposed to be excited about this? Am I supposed to go, Oh my God, this is exciting. <laughs> it's definitely the way that they pitch some of these things. Weddings are still carried out on this plantation. Uh, concerts are carried out on this plantation. And we just go and have fun and party our asses off as we dance on the blood of so many humans that built the country. But we're supposed to be happy about that. We're supposed to go, I'm gonna stay in an Airbnb and live the history. You're not living the history, bro, unless you don't make it out of there. Well, and how are they trying to rephrase a slavery in certain school systems like involuntary relocation or something like that? I remember yeah. I, I was uh, reading a book called uh, The Half Has Never Been Told. It, it's more of a kind of telling of the slave system as a mechanical, mechanical entity. And how it really functioned, and, and more of the slave trade after um, you know the international slave trade was banned, and so it kind of went more into actually breeding people, you know, because you couldn't bring them <sighs> over from across across the, the seas, own. breeding people and systematically moving them across the country in chains from here to there, and literally slavery being the backbone of what made America. Um, as successful as it was all the way uh, up until World War II when we became uh, after that uh, the superpower, which is now obviously changing. Jackson, but, uh, bro, those are lip talking points that we don't yeah, teach man. in our schools. Yeah. Because some kids might feel bad. Yep. No, they won't. Maybe they'll learn about their history. It's a damn shame. It's the most basic history, but we don't teach anyone this. Instead, it was nice rainbows and butterflies. Get out of here.